Hi friends, you are on the channel Cross Pacific Confrontation. Don't forget to subscribe, put likes and comments. Enjoy watching. Today, we'll talk about how Huawei's latest 5G-enabled smartphones, as well as the advanced chips manufactured in China for these devices, have become iconic symbols of China's successful response to sanctions imposed by the United States. You may recall that Huawei, once China's largest smartphone maker, has been forced to adapt its manufacturing in the face of tighter technological restrictions introduced in 2020. Asked in March about Huawei Technologies' intentions to introduce new 5G smartphones, Vice Chairman Eric Xu Jidun strongly rejected the assumption in front of a large audience. Xu stated, if you're anticipating purchasing a 5G smartphone made by Huawei, we all must wait for approval from the U.S. Department of Commerce. We can manufacture 5G smartphones when they grant us licenses for 5G chips. Besides Xu at the podium, Meng Wanzhou, Huawei's chief financial officer and daughter of its founder, Ren Zhengfei, simply smiled in response to the query. At that time, the Mate 40 series, released in October 2020, marked the final line of 5G smartphones produced by Huawei. Fast forward to late August and Huawei made a surprising move in the smartphone industry by launching a discreet pre-sales campaign for its new Mate 60 Pro 5G handset. About a week later, another quietly executed online pre-sales campaign followed, this time for its top-of-the-line Mate 60 Pro Plus smartphone. The launch of the Mate 60 Pro's pre-sales campaign happened to coincide with the visit of U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo to China, during which working groups were established to facilitate ongoing bilateral communication even as Washington's export controls remained in effect. However, it was Huawei's release of new 5G smartphones powered by a novel central processing unit, CPU, that drew considerable attention, particularly regarding how and where this chip was produced under the strict trade sanctions imposed by the United States. Chinese benchmarking website N22 was the first to identify this chip as the Kirin 9000s, developed by Huawei's chip design unit, Hisilicon. A third-party turdown of the Mate 60 Pro earlier this month revealed that another U.S. sanctioned company, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corp., SMIC, China's leading contract chip manufacturer, was responsible for producing the advanced processor. This revelation prompted U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan to request more information about the 5G CPU, given the existing restrictions on tech access. Both Huawei and SMIC have chosen not to disclose details about the domestically produced system on a chip, SoC, used in the new Mate 60 Pro series. Nonetheless, Chinese social media has seen a surge of patriotic enthusiasm, with medicines celebrating the new 5G smartphones and their advanced CPU as symbols of China's successful defiance of stringent U.S. sanctions. Huawei stands as the exceptional company not only surviving but thriving amidst U.S. sanctions. It showcases China's technological prowess to the world. Ruk Daifeng Pingdian, an influential online personality in a widely popular post on the Chinese microblogging platform Weibo, garnering over 2,700 likes. During Huawei's recent product launch event on Monday, some internet users expressed deep emotions. One of the most upvoted comments on Weibo emphasized the difficulty China faced in nurturing a global technology powerhouse like Huawei. Huawei's resurgence in the 5G smartphone market and the controversy surrounding its advanced domestically produced processor illustrate the extensive efforts the company has undertaken to strengthen its operations, following years of challenges brought about by U.S. trade sanctions. This return to the 5G arena also represents another significant public relations victory for the Shenzhen-based firm, coming two years after Meng's triumphant return to China. She had spent nearly three years under house arrest in Canada while fighting extradition to the U.S. on charges related to a bank fraud case. Her release was celebrated in China as a triumph over U.S. dominance. Huawei's launch of the Mate 60 Pro, featuring a domestically manufactured 7 nanometer SOC, has generated immense interest among Chinese consumers. Since August 31, it is likely to have sold over 2 million units, noted Edison Lee, an equity analyst at Jefferies, in a research note on Monday. Lee also mentioned that QI's newly introduced foldable model, the Mate X5, which uses the same soak as the Mate 60 Pro series, has also seen strong demand. According to a report by the Beijing-based business newspaper Securities Daily, QI has already increased its smartphone shipment target for the second half of the year by 20%, driven by the popularity of the Mate 60 Pro series. Lee remarked, while Huawei's return to the 5G smartphone market may not have surprised investors entirely, the level of excitement in the market certainly is notable. He further indicated that investors are eager to learn more about China's capability in producing this silk, its current and future capacity, and which supply chain partners Huawei has engaged for the Mate 60 Pro series. 
Furthermore, there are numerous questions about how Huawei's re-entry into the high-end segment will impact sales of Apple's new iPhone 15 series and other flagship Android models. There is also speculation about whether the Mate 60 Pro can inject vitality into a sluggish smartphone industry, as Li added. Huawei, previously the leading smartphone vendor in China, has been forced to make significant adjustments to its smartphone and telecommunications network equipment production in response to the tightened trade restrictions imposed by Washington in 2020. These restrictions encompassed access to semiconductors that were either developed or produced using U.S. technology, regardless of their origin. Earlier this year, the company's founder and CEO, Ren, disclosed that QI had substituted over 13,000 components in its product range with locally sourced alternatives and had redesigned more than 4,000 circuit boards over the past three years in response to U.S. trade sanctions. In a recent turndown of the Mate 60 Pro smartphone by Canadian semiconductor research firm Tech Insights, the maker of the Kirin 9000 CPU was identified as SMIC. This discovery fueled speculation that the chip manufacturer was assisting QI in circumventing stringent U.S. tech sanctions in a covert manner. Dan Hutchison, vice chairman at Tech Insights, remarked, The difficulty of this achievement demonstrates the country's resilience in chip technology. It verified the production of the 7 nanometer chip would constitute a significant violation of the U.S. sanctions implemented last October, which restricted China's logic chip manufacturing to a 14 nanometer process. In an email interview, Minitek Mitchell Cascio, the CEO of Tokyo-based electronics research firm Fomalhaut Techno Solutions, suggested that the Kirin 9000 CPU may have been manufactured using MIC's 14 nanometer process based on their analysis of a handset teardown. He indicated that certain specialized techniques were employed to enhance the chip's performance, bringing it closer to the level of a 7 nanometer grade processor. On the other hand, Jeffries Lee proposed earlier this month that SMIC had no direct involvement in the production of the Hisilicon Design Karen 9000s. Lee stated, While the Karen 9000s may share structural similarities with other chips produced by SMIC, it is plausible that Huawei acquired SMIC technology and equipment to develop the Karen 9000s. An industry expert from Nora Technology Group, who preferred to remain anonymous due to the sensitivity of the matter, mentioned that many semiconductor industry experts questioned SMIC's ability to scale up production for 7 nanometer chips. SMIC's ability to manufacture semiconductors with 7 nanometer features holds great significance and has been driven by Huawei's need to remain competitive, especially in the context of 5G technology. While the controversy surrounding the advanced CPU in the Mate 60 Pro series has sparked discussions in Washington about imposing further controls on both Huawei and SMIC, Triello believes that the Biden administration is likely to be cautious about imposing new restrictions due to ongoing efforts to improve U.S.-China relations. He also noted the difficulty of proving that SMIC violated U.S. extraterritorial export controls and pointed out that any new restrictions would harm U.S. suppliers of both companies and face opposition from U.S. industry. The sustainability of Huawei's positive momentum in 5G smartphone sales may hinge on its ability to assure a stable supply of crucial components while maintaining cost effectiveness. The company still relies on external suppliers including Japanese filter provider Murata, U.S.-based Global Foundries and Taiwanese Foundry Win Simi for certain semiconductor components, according to a recent research note by Ku Ming Chi, an analyst at TF International Securities. Competing in China, the world's largest smartphone market, against domestic Android handset manufacturers and Apple also presents challenges related to U.S. restrictions affecting supply chain partnerships, as highlighted by IDC analyst Will Wong. For instance, Memory chip maker SK Hynix has denied supplying components to the Mate 60 Pro series since the introduction of U.S. restrictions against Huawei. Wang also identified the challenge of enticing former users who switched to other smartphone brands in recent years back to Huawei. This is a complex task because other brands have established ecosystems that create strong customer loyalty. For instance, Apple's comprehensive products and services ecosystem has successfully drawn an increasing number of individuals transitioning from China's Android smartphone market segment. Regarding the development of Huawei's proprietary hardware and software ecosystem, Ren has expressed the company's commitment to allocate significant resources, including tens of thousands of personnel and substantial capital investments annually, for the advancement of the mobile operating system HarmonyOS and its Linux-based operating platform for enterprise servers, known as Uleros. The battle of the tech giants continues and our news for today is over. We would like to hear your opinion. Will Huawei be able to resume its popularity as it was before? Have you already seen their new model in your city store?